I had a lot of fun playing this game. I enjoyed playing this game, especially watching my female character jumping up and down. I don't know, there's something magical about this. But this game is not about animations and maybe I will do a separate video just about animations in this game. We're talking about HDR today and yes, HDR, this right now looks absolutely fantastic, but I'm still not 100% happy about the HDR implementation, okay? And I will let you know why. Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. HDR in this game is actually on a very good level, but unfortunately not perfect. And I will tell you why. The first problem what we have in this game is that we have no HDR system level calibration support on a PlayStation 5. That means the game relies on the HDR settings in the game. So and now we have the problem that the maximum peak brightness in this game is depending on the picture brightness or the brightness setting in the game. That means you make the whole picture darker or you make the whole picture brighter and you change the maximum peak brightness as well. So this is, it's not a big problem, but it should be done better, okay? So this is my only complaint what I have with this game because otherwise the HDR implementation is actually okay. And maybe okay is not the correct word because HDI in this game is actually pretty good in my opinion. Again, the only problem what we have is that we we have we have um, not the bright brightness. Okay, animations are just fantastic in this game. Okay, so the only problem what I have with this game is really that the specular highlights are just a little bit too bright, and there's no way to adjust that. So let's take a closer look on the HDR in-game settings what we have in this game and again please remember that there is no HDR system level calibration support for the PlayStation 5 in this game. That means, that doesn't mean that we can't use HDRG. We can use HDRG even there is no HDR system level calibration support because it also depends on the game and in my opinion I tested the whole game with HDRG enabled and it does look pretty good. So let's start on the top. We have brightness, we have contrast and we have the user interface brightness and user interface brightness is really just for the HUD symbols on the screen so you can actually adjust this one as you like it. The next setting what we have is called brightness and this setting is responsible for the yeah, average picture brightness in this game and also for the maximum peak brightness in specular highlights. So this is the problem what I have here. I mean it's again complaining on a very high level but there is a problem because now when you set this up as you like it and maybe you like a little bit of a brighter picture, then you automatically increase the maximum peak brightness and specular highlights. And that means that if now the setting exceeds the capabilities of your screen monitor or TV, you may end up with a lot of clipping in specular highlights. The next setting that we have in this game is called contrast and here you need to be very careful what you're doing because if you decrease this setting too much you will end up with a very washed out picture and if you increase this setting too much you will have a lot of black level crush. So what is now my recommendation in regards of the HDR settings in Stellar Blade and as always it is very hard to make a proper recommendation for all the TV screen monitors out there because it's not possible, okay? Because I don't know what screen you're using. I don't know if you play in a very dark environment or a very bright environment, okay? I can't just tell you what I'm seeing right now on the screen and what is my recommendation from what I'm seeing, okay? So this right now is the LG G2 and the settings, I haven't touched the settings at all, okay? So we're talking about the factory standard settings in the game. So HGHG right now in my opinion is a little bit too dark. That's my opinion. Dynamic tone mapping on at the moment is not changing a lot as you can see because, and that's the reason for it, 
Um, there are a lot of very bright objects on the screen like this fire here in the background and that means the maximum peak brightness is already used even in HGHG. Okay, so there's no problem with that. So dynamic tone mapping on has not much of, um, yeah, can't do much in regards of changing the brightness here. So you can see here, let me do this, a uh, much bigger difference right now. Okay, so because not many specular highlights, not many bright objects on the screen, dynamic tone mapping on can use all the power or all the capability from the screen just to increase the average picture brightness. So that's fine because right now this actually looks a little bit better. So the problem is now what I have is that um, in the next level it's a very dark level. You play in the night or something like that and dynamic tone mapping on is just over brighten the picture way too much. So here right now it would be okay. In the next level it's not. So my recommendation actually in regards of HGHG dynamic tone mapping on is give it a try, play with HGHG if you like it, because we still have the option that we can increase the brightness in the game. So and now let's say we don't like the picture right now, we like to increase the brightness. So what I found is, and yeah, it's actually quite simple to do because all what you need to do is increase the setting. So let's just say we're increasing this to 75, which is probably already a little bit too much. But to show you something here, now we have a more washed out picture look, okay? And I don't like the colors anymore because it looks like we're just lifting the whole picture, okay? There's no proper control of colors and stuff like this because right now I really think it's just washed out, okay? What I found is in regards of the HDR black level floor, it's still good. If there is a need to display zero nits or absolute nothing, the game still can output this even with setting the brightness to 100. But of course, it's lifting all the other parts, okay? So that means if there was some sort of texture close to zero nits, it has now a much higher nits. That means you wash out the picture. Okay, so now, of course, we can use the contrast setting to, let's say, mitigate this problem, okay? But we need to be very careful because if we do this too much, let's say we're changing this also to 75, you have some sort of a very bad picture. You, you crush a lot of details actually. So what you need to do is really you need to play around a little bit because it really depends on your display of course and your liking of course. So what I found is increasing this by one step, contrast by one step is actually a good start. Okay. So this looks already much better on my screen. Okay. That, so that's uh, setting 55. When we increasing this one more time, I think it's pretty good. Okay. So now I like the picture. So we have actually better colors, but still the picture is brighter. So again, that's all what I can recommend because there is no better way actually to set up HDR. So what you need to understand now is because we increased the picture brightness and we also increased actually the contrast we're making these specular highlights even more brighter. So there's no way again that we can adjust specular highlights or the maximum peak brightness in this specular highlights or also this one here. There's no way, okay? So that's how we, that's how it is unfortunately, okay? But this is how we should set up the HDR in Stellar Blade. Okay, my friends, so that's it for this video. And yeah, we need to keep in mind that we're just talking about a demo version here. And yeah, maybe or maybe not, there is a difference with the well, in the final game. I think the final game gets released mid of April, if I'm not wrong about that. But usually, and that's my experience, there's not much or almost no difference between demo version and final game. The only difference what I saw was in Tekken 8, because the Tekken 8 demo had no HDI at all. No HDR, just the final game. But it's, that, that's not the case here, okay? So here we have HDR and HDR looks pretty good, especially here in the intro. I really do like it. During gameplay, I'm missing some, some effects, okay? But, but it's not a cyberpunk game, okay? It's not cyberpunk HDR quality, let's say like this. The difference here is we have really a nice HDR black level floor compared to cyberpunk, okay? So maybe it's actually better. Anyway, you get my point, okay? HDR looks good, but the HDR settings are not perfect, okay? Because I don't like to have that the brightness setting 
for the average picture brightness or for the whole picture is, is actually also increasing the maximum peak brightness and specular highlights. That's not, that's not a good thing to do, okay? Anyway, it's good. I like it. Gameplay is fun. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to buy the final game or the full game because the price what they're asking here actually in the PlayStation Store for the digital version is 125 Australian dollars. That's a lot. That's way too much in my opinion. I may get the physical version for $109, but again, probably not. Because again, I'm pretty sure be between demo version and final version, not much of a difference, okay? So thank you very much for watching me and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.